In order to achieve deep sleep and to wake up feeling alert in the morning, let's look at breathing. If you're breathing through an open mouth during sleep, your, your breathing is likely to be shallow and fast, and this is more likely to awaken you from sleep. So mouth breathing will also increase the risk of snoring through the mouth, of course, and obstructive sleep apnea. When the mouth is open, resistance to breathing is higher during sleep. In actual fact, the mouth during sleep imposes a resistance to your breathing that's 2.5 times that of the nose. When the mouth is open, the tongue is not able to rest in the roof of the mouth, and as a result, then the tongue is more likely to encroach in the airway, narrowing the airway, and increasing the risk of collapse. If the airway collapses during sleep, and we stop breathing for a period of time of 10 seconds or more, that's called an apnea. During an apnea, blood oxygen saturation can lower, carbon dioxide levels can increase, and this will arouse the sleeper out of deep sleep. So, to achieve deep sleep, with minimum risk of sleep disorder breathing. The first point that I would say, nasal breathing is of utmost importance. To downregulate before sleep, it's important that the last 10 minutes before you go to bed are devoted to switching off. Overstimulation of the mind and a racing mind can impair sleep quality. And if you know yourself, if you've had quite a bit of stress during the day, and your mind is quite active and the mind is racing, it's difficult to fall asleep so readily. So how do we learn how to switch off? This exercise is exactly that. How to switch off, how to downregulate to help achieve optimal sleep. For this exercise, you can do it while maybe watching TV or just downtime in the evening, just before you go to bed. You can put one hand on your chest and one hand just above your navel and to tune into your breathing patterns. Feel the slightly colder air coming into your nose and to feel the slightly warmer air as it leaves your nose. And as you feel the airflow coming in and out of your nose, gently soften the speed of your breathing. Slow down the speed of the breath to the point that your breath into the nose is so calm and so quiet and so still. And at the top of the breath, bring a total feeling of relaxation to the body that you're having a relaxed and a gentle breath out. When you need to breathe again, take a very soft and light and slow breath in. So the breath in during this exercise is so slow, almost imperceptible. You cannot hear it and you can hardly feel it. You're taking a very soft and light and slow, gentle breath coming into your nose and a really relaxed and a slow and gentle exhalation. The exhalation is slow and prolonged about one and a half times the length of the inhalation. The exhalation is passive, almost that the air is just leaving the body effortlessly. The objective during this exercise is to breathe less air. By breathing less air, carbon dioxide increases in the blood and gives you a sensation that you would like to take in more air. So when you breathe less air than what you normally breathe, you will generate a feeling of air hunger. And this points to the fact that you're doing the exercise correctly. In order to downregulate, we breathe less air for 10 minutes before sleep. You will verify this by virtue of the increased watery saliva in the mouth. When we get stressed as human beings, the mouth goes dry. When we go into relaxation, or if you do slow breathing or light breathing or low breathing, that in turn will stimulate the vagus nerve and you will have increased watery saliva in the mouth, which is an indication that the vagus nerve has been stimulated. To stimulate the vagus nerve, breathe very, very soft and slow into your nose. And at the top of the breath, a total feeling of relaxation to the body and a relaxed and a gentle breath out. Keep bringing your attention back onto your breathing and gently allow your breathing to soften to the point of air hunger. If somebody was watching you breathe, they should see about 30% less movement. Don't worry too much if you're breathing using the upper chest or the diaphragm. The objective during this exercise is to breathe less air. You breathe less air by softening the inhalation and allowing a relaxed and a prolonged exhalation. The objective is that the air hunger is tolerable. But if you find that the air hunger is too much to the point it causes you stress, just take a rest for about 15 to 20 seconds and then go back to doing slow, light breathing. You will find that if you have a BOLT score 
of 15 seconds or less that the air hunger can increase too much a few times throughout the exercise. So don't worry if it happens quite frequently. In time, with practice, you will be able to gently soften and slow down the breath to the point of air hunger and an air hunger that's sustainable and tolerable for the duration of the exercise. It's a great way to help relax body and mind, to bring the body and mind into a state of relaxation conducive to falling asleep. You may even feel drowsy as you are doing the exercise. You're taking your attention out of your mind onto your breathing. You're feeling the slightly colder air coming into your nose and the slightly warmer air as it's leaving your nose. You're gently softening the speed of the airflow entering and leaving the body. Almost breathing in that's imperceptible, really soft and a slow, gentle inhalation through the nose and a relaxed and slow and prolonged exhalation. Allow the air to leave the body effortlessly. And if your mind wanders off, bring your attention gently back onto your breathing. Use this also as a means of training the brain to have its attention on one thing at a time. In this instance, you're placing your attention on your breathing. With practice, as you train your brain, it will improve your concentration and attention span. You're holding your attention on the airflow coming in and out of the nose. Gently softening the speed of the air coming into the nose and allowing a really relaxed and a slow and gentle exhalation. The objective is to take less air into the body. You know you are breathing less when you feel air hunger. Air hunger signifies that carbon dioxide is increasing in the blood. As carbon dioxide increases in the blood, it stimulates the vagus nerve. It also helps to open up your blood vessels to improve your blood circulation and it also helps with increased oxygen delivery from the red blood cells to tissues and organs, including the brain. Breathing light to feel air hunger has a calming effect on the central nervous system. It calms the brain. The brain receives more blood flow. The brain receives more oxygen. Ironically, many people feel that in order to increase oxygen and blood flow to the brain, one must breathe more. However, that is simply not correct. Many of us can testify that if you were to take five or 10 big breaths in and out of your nose or mouth, that you can feel lightheaded. This exercise with slow breathing and light breathing is a down regulator. This is helping to reduce the effects of stimulation throughout the day. Social media, workload, worries, anxiety, all of these things will impact our ability to fall into a deep, deep sleep. The ingredients necessary for deep sleep are nasal breathing with the tongue resting in the roof of the mouth, breathing light, breathing slow, and breathing low. This exercise is focusing on breathing light. You're focusing on the airflow coming into your nose and you're gently softening the speed of the air as it enters the nostrils. At the top of the breath, you're bringing a total feeling of relaxation to the body and you're having a relaxed and a gentle exhalation. After you breathe out, then take a very, very soft and slow and gentle breath into your nose. At the top of the breath, a feeling of relaxation, allowing the air to leave the body effortlessly. The objective is to feel air hunger throughout the 10 minutes as a down regulator before sleep. But if the air hunger gets too much, take a rest for about 15 to 20 seconds and start again. During the exercise, try not to tense up the body. Try not to deliberately interfere with your breathing. Don't hold your breath. Instead, just gently soften your breathing. Soften the speed of the air coming into your nose and allow a relaxed and slow and gentle exhalation.